The teams are out. Here we go. Probably the most anticipated match of the World Cup so far. Ireland have named their team to take on the Springboks today. The Springboks obviously named theirs a couple of days ago. So we've got the 23s. How do we see this game going? That's what I'm talking about in the video. Kind of a focus on the Ireland team, obviously, as that's the fresher news today. But I'll be speaking a lot as well just about the kind of the game overall, the game plans we might see in particular from an Irish point of view. So drop a comment down below. What do you make of the 23 that Andy Farrell has gone with? And which side do you see winning this fixture? I think it is incredibly tough to call, but I'm really looking forward to being there on Saturday night at the Stade de France. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel. But let's get into it. As I often do with these kind of team selection reaction videos is a headline for me at the top of it. The big thing that strikes me with this Irish team, which I'll whack up on screen, is that Ireland are picking their best side. And that sounds a really simple point to make, but I don't think this is a team selection in reaction to what we've seen from the Springboks, which I think could have been the temptation for Andy Farrell. They could have looked at options in the back row and thought maybe they need another option at the line out and adjusted their team selection because of that. They could have looked at the type of game we're going to see and the kicking, which I'll come on to and thought that maybe Connor Murray is the better option instead of Jamison Gibson Park. They haven't gone down that road. And I think that's a positive thing because I I think Ireland are saying this is the best team that we think we have available and we believe it's good enough to do the job against the Springboks. They haven't fallen into the trap of perhaps trying to pick a team to counteract some of the strengths of their opposition. They're saying you stop us in the same way the Springboks have laid down that exact same challenge to Ireland. So fascinating from that point of view. In, in terms of the, the team selection, uh, Ronan Kelleher in a hooker, Dan Sheehan, who has missed the opening two games because of an injury, is on the bench. Um... And outside of that, it is kind of what most of us would have expected, really. I think it's interesting that Jack Crowley is on the bench inst instead of Ross Byrne. And then also the 5-3 split for Ireland rather than the 7-1 of the Springboks. So again, going back to my point at the top of the video, Ireland haven't even looked at it and thought, oh, we need six forwards coming off our bench then. We knew, well, it'd have been quite surprising if they'd stretched to the seven that South Africa have gone for. But might they have thought, well, we're going to need six here? No. Nope. They've gone 5-3 and they're backing themselves to be able to get the result with what is their strongest team. And I think a lot of the time at the moment when we're looking at the best teams in the world, I think you, you kind of know their strongest team pretty much, don't you? There were some question marks over Hooker. I think Dan Sheehan, had he been fitter, might be starting. But outside of that, it's probably pretty much what we expected, despite some of those conversations that I have seen amongst some of the media in Ireland about Connor Murray at nine or whether it's someone else in the back row to to give you another kind of jumper in the line out or, or those sorts of things. So they're both strong squads. They've both gone for what they think are their strongest squads. And regardless of injuries, in particular from what the Springboks having to deal with, I think both of these teams have a mentality of next guy up. Whoever is in that 23, go out and do the job for us. And it is going to be brilliant on the weekend. I cannot wait for it. I wrote down on my notes who wins and I do think this is a bit of a flip of a coin. I think I saw Sonny Bill Williams say that in some of his analysis that he's been doing over in France that it's just such a, a difficult game to call and I genuinely think it is. They possibly at the moment are the two most impressive sides in the tournament so far as many people have pointed out. I don't think we'd be too shocked if this ended up being the final at the end of October as well but overall I think this is going to be a game that's decided by the side which are able to play to their strengths the most. So I think broadly speaking, we both know how both sides will want to approach this game and what a good game for Ireland and a good game for South Africa looks like. I think it's which of those teams are able to play the way they want to play the most. Who can counteract the other to the best? And in previous Ireland sides gone by you might have looked at this match up and thought, are they going to be able to deal with the physicality of the Springboks? Some of the, the most disappointing defeats, I suppose, for Ireland against the top sides in the world over the years, not necessarily talking about the last four years under, under Andy Farrell, but previously, I remember, was it the 2018 or 2019 Six Nations when England went into Dublin and just physically dominated them from minute one and got the victory there? When they've played some of the best teams like the Springboks, like the All Blacks or France, it's when they haven't won that physical battle. And I think that is an element that Ireland are much, much better at now. But I don't think they'll be purely gunning for the Springboks in that kind of physical game plan. They will need to try and get their attacking game going in the way that we've seen it when they've played incredibly well over the last few years. In fact, probably looking at that New Zealand series 
Um, what was it, back in 2022 when they won 2-1, the series in New Zealand, which was, a, I think, a really important moment, actually, for this team as well, where the first test, Ireland were actually playing some nice stuff in the opening 15 minutes or so, and then they just lost their way and the All Blacks completely got on top of them. But they came back, they were able to stick to those attacking structures and ultimately won the series. So that's going to be absolutely crucial for Ireland as well. They have other strings to their bow. I think that's kind of the point I was trying to make in in this section is that Ireland are a better team physically. They will feel confident of being able to try and match the Springboks, which they need to be able to do. But they have other strings to their bow to be able to hurt the Springboks as well out wide, as South Africa do as well, actually. We've spoken about it a lot on the channel. Any regular watchers will see that I've spoken about quite a lot that South Africa have expanded their game plan and can do more than they have done previously. So which team is able to dictate take the game and play how they want is going to be absolutely fascinating. I do think as exciting a match as it is going to be, it could be a real arm wrestle. It could almost feel similar to the Springboks against Scotland in that it's so tense and neither side wants to make that mistake, which could be the result that or could be the moment that means they they lose the game. So we'll wait and see. Another thing as well is kicking. I think kicking is going to be huge. Um, I think... We'll see a lot of it in the same way, though, the Ireland against France in the Six Nations, we saw a lot of kicking as well. People look back on that game and after it, everyone was saying it's one of the best matches we've seen in Six Nations history. And it was brilliant between two incredibly high quality sides. There was a lot of kicking in that game as well, though, a huge amount of kicking in the game. And I think it's going to be the same here. That's why it is interesting that Ireland haven't gone for Conor Murray. I like the fact that they haven't, because as I've said already, they are sticking to their best team. They are picking a team to do what they want to do and dictate onto the opposition rather than being dictated to. But I think the kicking game will be key for both sides. And I think Ireland will probably look back on the rugby championship and the game that the South Africa lost to New Zealand and how important the kicking game was for the All Blacks in the first half of that game. And they will perhaps look to try and replicate that, whether it's box kicks, whether it's Johnny Sexton who'll be running the attack. Obviously, James Lowe is often used as a left-footed kicking option as well. Mac Hansen at fullback. So lots of different options for Ireland. Which side comes out on top in the kicking battle is always going to be key. Final thing I wanted to finish on in terms of this game is pressure and who's under more pressure. And look, it's not a winner takes all game anyway, because I would still back both of these teams to get through the pool. And on their day, I would back both of these teams to potentially be able to beat either France or New Zealand, whoever they were to face in a quarter final. But it does feel to me like there's a bit more pressure on Ireland to perform. And this might be unfair but I feel like this has the potential to be that kind of putting their marker down for this World Cup for the reason that they could go on and win it. Because the Six Nations was at the start of the year. They have kind of haven't played any of the top teams in the build-up. They get a result on Saturday night against South Africa, who are playing really, really well under the lights in Paris. I just feel like that could be that kind of moment that everyone, and let's be honest, Ireland, not in terms of world ranking, but I think in terms of a lot of the discussion so far... <clears throat> excuse me, haven't been spoken about as much. They've flown a little bit under the radar. This is the moment where I think they could be at the forefront of everyone's minds. And obviously the pressure slightly off for the Springboks because they've already beaten Scotland. So even if they were to lose to Ireland, then I think they'll still feel they'll be able to get themselves out of the group anyway. Whereas Ireland, a defeat for them, and then they'd be going into their final match in the pool against Scotland. And there's a lot more pressure on them. So as I say, it's not winner takes all. But I just kind of feel like for Ireland, this is a huge opportunity for them. Whereas I think South Africa, particularly because South Africa lost the first game of the 2019 World Cup to New Zealand and still went on and won it. I don't feel like there's as much pressure on them. That could be unfair, but you can give me your thoughts in the in the comments section down below. I just feel like there's more, not belief around South Africa. I probably don't know exactly how to to articulate it. But I think a lot of people are pretty confident they know what South Africa can do. And even though Ireland have beaten all the best sides in the world over the last few years, I think in 2023, I know they beat France in Six Nations, but perhaps some people are just waiting for that, as I say, that marker being laid down. I remember a lot of people speak about the England 2003 World Cup side, about, you know, some of the moments that that they really 
put that statement victory out there. And before the World Cup in 2003, they went to New Zealand and won there. And then they beat Australia on home soil as well in their warm-up games. And that was kind of confirmation of the fact that this side are the real deal. I wonder whether a victory against the Springboks on the weekend would be that confirmation that this Ireland side are the real deal. We all know how good they are already. They've beaten all the best teams. They've done a Six Nations Grand Slam. But I still just think this close close to the tournament or in the tournament, you sometimes need that statement victory as well. And this could be it. Anyway, that's kind of my general thoughts on the game. Let me know what your views in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this Ireland team as well. I kind of like what I'm seeing from them. I don't think they have picked a team to counteract the box. They've picked a team that they think is their best team. And it's up to the spring box to try and stop them. It's going to be fascinating. Going to be a brilliant game. Drop a comment down below. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. But I'll see you in the next one.